Okay, welcome everyone. I'm so excited for tonight. I'm actually thrilled to be between these two lovely ladies and I'm very excited for what this could mean for you because a couple years ago, I think I would have been shocked that I was even like having this conversation about protein. It was not a focus, you know, I'm gluten-free. It's all about gluten-free. It's all about gut health. And then I had a baby and then I was struggling to lose weight and my body was a different thing. So I had figured out gut health, all of this stuff. But then here I was as like a 38 year oldish person. And I was like, my body's different. Like things have changed. What's going on? And so that started me down a protein path, if you will. And it's been really awesome to see how it's actually helped me. And that's why I'm excited about doing this because it is, I love things that are simple that you can just add into your routine. It's not huge life changes. It's tweaks, but doing a tweak, getting great results for that. Um, so that is why I'm going to introduce my two lovely ladies here, Melissa Shaver and Andrea Stutt. They are on both sides of me in my screen. And they are amazing women who, when they want to figure something out, they just dwell, just jump into research and get it all figured out. But what I love about it is a lot of their heart is to help others on that path. So it's not just knowing it for knowledge sake and then like holding on to it. When your life changes, you want to help others. So Melissa, if you could start us off and can you kind of share your, like why you started getting focused on protein intake? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. It's fun to be here with everybody and I am still admitting people. So we're so excited that all of you are with us. Um, and thank you, Diana. Yeah, I think a big thing for me, I love hearing your story. And that's the coolest thing I think of all of this is that we all come from a different place of what was our starting point to launch into even being aware of protein and that we were had it or didn't have it and all that good stuff. And for me, it's only been a few years. And protein has been a big piece of connecting dots for me, to be honest, that and gut health, those two areas, but you'll get to hear some of that. But for me, the um, thing that was used, the tool that was used for me was I was doing a three-day nutritional fast. And in that fast, I've done fasts throughout my life, but in this one, it was very focused on nutritional-based focus of collagen and protein. And it just made me curious. It made me super curious to be like, okay, why? <laughs> why so much protein? Why 68 grams? I don't know why that was a big deal for me, but it was of just asking the questions of why do I feel so good? And why do I have clarity in the midst of uh, really reducing calories? And how can I feel this way after three days? And it just made me start doing research. So that was really the beginning point for me of realizing that I'm actually protein deficient and that I felt the way that I felt <laughs> because I um, did not have enough protein for me. And I don't know, some of you may be like me, but my kind of story <laughs> of background was I was more vegan, more pescatarian. I've kind of gone through different ways, but if you are towards vegetarian, vegan, anything like that, Plant-based is just, your. it's hard to get, you will have to eat so much bulk to get all the protein. I was not focused on protein at that time. I was focused on eating vegetables. And um, so there's a big diff difference in that area. I wasn't, I was pescatarian by the time I got started and really got curious towards protein, but I still was not eating enough. And I think stats show 46% of Americans are protein deficient. And women, we are not even close to the consumption that we should be of having protein. I think Andrea is gonna be talking about that, which is gonna be super cool. But that's really where I started and realizing that protein is the key part to all cellular function. Like everything about us, metab metabolic functioning, brain, uh, regulation of our tissues, of our muscles, but, you know, we think of protein with bodybuilding, with muscle growth, but it goes across the board of so many other things. For me, adding this protein has changed everything for stabilization, hormone health, clarity, energy, sleep. It kind of goes across the board for me in regards to that and what it's done for my metabolism. So, 
it's it's been a big piece. I'm very grateful that a fast <laughs> made me realize that I'm protein deficient and it's changed everything for me because of it. So when you say protein deficient, those things that you just listed, are those kind of like the symptoms or signs that you would, if like someone's like, wait, how do I know if I'm protein deficient? Oh my goodness. Such a great yeah. question. Yeah. Like, yeah. A lot of those things. Well, lack of energy, of course, a lot of people with iron deficiency. So if you're anemic or anything like that, it a lot of times has to do with that, but like brittle hair, brittle nails, um, skin, drying skin. There's so many pieces of that that is a full connection to protein. Yeah. So those of you listening, as you're listening to this, you know, feel free to drop in the chat or if you're watching the recording, like think write down, like, oh my gosh, that's me. Like write down the symptoms, right? Because as she's talking, I'm like, oh, I don't have, my skin is not nearly as dry as it used to be. Right. You know, like things, I'm like, oh, like, uh-huh. So thank you, Melissa. Yeah, for sure. Andrea. So we're good friends and I've heard some of your um, like protein journey and I love like watching how things have changed. Andrea is amazing on her social media, like just showing up in her stories and just seeing that. So I would love to hear your story about when you and how, why protein and why you talk about it all the time now. Okay. <laughs> I talk about it all the time um, because partially just being I'm 51. And so Melissa didn't share her age either, but you know, we're both women in our fifties. Um, when you start to get a little bit older, you start to realize like, I need to be intentional with my health period, you know? And so I also was like, Melissa, I had started with gut health, getting inflammation down all that originally. But then when I hit about 50, um, I started to get a little a, a, a belly, like all of the sudden it was like, it just kind of came up, but I, mind you, I'd been healthy. I'd been exercising. I'd been doing a lot. Um, but, and I knew in the back of my mind, I needed more protein because I had done some little challenges with my boot camp group. And, and one of the things was always like, you need to up your protein. I was like, oh, okay, okay. You know, but I don't, I just don't think it really sunk in like how important it was until I started to get that belly. And then that's when I also did a three day nutritional fast um, with the protein intake. And I was a lot like Melissa. I was like, wait a second, when I finish this fast, I want to keep going. And so then I started to really dive into like, how much protein do I actually really need every day? Okay. And then I didn't just think about it. I got a tracker, honestly, and I started to track my protein and I realized what I thought was plenty of protein. Meaning like, I always would be like, I feel like I'm eating a lot of protein. Like, you know, like a lot of people say, well, when I actually like actually tracked it on my fitness pal, I was only getting about 60 grams a day, y'all. Mm -hmm. I need to be getting more than double that. Um, and so that's when my journey began. And then I started to see my body change. So it's called body recomposition, where you start to lose fat and you start to grow muscle, you have more lean tissue. And when I started to actually see change, I started to get on a little bit of a soapbox about it and I'm still on it. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard not to, when you're like, you know, I didn't have to do some crazy overhaul of my diet. I'm gluten-free. So I know what it's like to do a crazy overhaul of my diet. And the other thing I love about adding in protein, it doesn't feel like diet food. You don't feel that energy of like restrictiveness and stop and don't, but it's more of this like, Positive. Yes. Go Andrea. I wanted to add to what Melissa was sharing is you said, what are some of the symptoms of, of inadequate protein? And one of the symptoms is just feeling hungry a lot. I mean, being dehydrated can cause you to feel hungry a lot, but not getting enough protein causes you to feel hungry a lot. So it actually does the opposite of what dieting would do. It actually helps you to feel satiated. So and I I started realizing this when I'd be, you know, be eight o'clock at night. And I'm like, why do I have the munchies today? And I would think back and I did not have protein all day long. So my blood sugar levels are all like, give me food now, quick, fast. And this is something that I've learned too. So really good tip. And probably one of the biggest flags that's like easy to spot. Mm -hmm. um, so talking protein, a lot of times we talk about muscle. So Melissa, 
I would love to hear more about how you focus in on strength training. You've always been health conscious and we all know exercise is important, but a lot of times what you do makes a huge difference. And I know a lot of times I talk to people who think they need hours at the gym or, you know, do all this work, but I would love to hear, you know, how has protein and building up muscle mass actually helped with autoimmune and those kind of issues, not just weight loss. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really big piece of my story that is, um, been fascinating for me. So I have autoimmune disorders. I have several, but the main ones that has, that this has made an impact on is celiac disease and autoimmune disorder. And I mean, and not autoimmune, hypothyroid. Um, and the interesting thing is guys, like I have worked out all of my life. I mean, seriously worked out all of my life. It's part of what I've done and I did it all through college, all the things. And it's changed over time, but it has been a part of who I am. And I never made a correlation in any way growing old, you know, getting older whenever I hit 40s, whenever all my autoimmune disorders started happening. If you have celiac disease, it's very easy to have a domino effect of other autoimmune disorders. Um, and But I've never made a connection between autoimmune um, workouts, protein never pulled all those pieces together and so I think that that has been for me to go after protein saying am I getting enough why am I not how much should women have how much should women have that are peri or or post menopause Andrea was sharing earlier I'm 59 she's 51 um, and getting to that place of understanding and getting a little bit intentional was such a big piece for me. And um, last year really started my whole year of really moving into strength training because it all started with protein and asking the questions in regards to it. And this is the thing for me. You heard Andrea talk a little bit about body composition and that you see the transformation start happening. And I love to put um, people like Andrea and I side by side, and I will connect it with this autoimmune uh, so that everyone can kind of understand. And the reason I love the comparison is because so often when we're doing anything, whether it's bringing in protein, usually the myth is if I eat too much protein, I'm going to gain weight. You actually lose weight whenever you eat good protein and you take out processed foods, um, you actually lose. I eat so much grams of protein every single day and I am losing, but I'm gaining muscle. But whenever I put someone like an Andrea beside a Melissa, um, our body composition is so different. I mean, for a year, we've almost done the exact same training. We've had the same coach. Um, we eat pretty much exactly the same as far as grams and things like that. But you put us side by side and our body composition is so different. I mean, Andrea is buff. <laughs> she is like goals if you are for body composition. And I look like I just might work out a little bit. I don't bit. want to lose this room call. That's fine. And hang on, let me try to get a couple of us turned off and muted real quick. So with that being said, a lot of that has to do with autoimmune and the things that we're going through. And what I have learned through that process is, you know, hypothyroid um, and having anything with the thyroid, that is your metabolic switch, if you will. And it's very hard for you to store fat for fuel and to build muscle. So you already have kind of an X against you whenever you have hypothyroid. Your body is already saying, we're not going to do what you want to do, baby girl. And I have gotten to the place where I'm like going to just break the myth because you actually can do things towards helping your thyroid, healing your thyroid a building muscle, but you have to be intentional with it. And it's not hard things to do. It's an intentional process of doing it and understanding how your body works. So that was the first thing of me just starting to research, question, look at things is to realize that all of us have something, an X against us in some way 
of how we're created, how we're formed, uh, the things that we might have as far as autoimmunes or different things like that. And it is okay. There are ways to go up against that and continue to be able to work. So that was the biggest thing for me is that sensitivity um, and not being able to boost metabolism, hypothyroid, that's a big piece. You know, protein actually helps boost. It actually fuels you. It's like, it's a flame within you um, to be able to get that metabolism boosted up. So as soon as I started adding protein, it adjusted my metabolism, which adjusted weight. A lot of people with hypothyroid, they think that they're going to be fluffy all their life. What I mean by that is, yeah, you might be a little bit overweight, but you might not actually be overweight. You might actually have a lot of inflammation on your body. And so that's the word I use. It's, it's, you just kind of feel like, you know, a little bit fluffy, like a marshmallow. And there's something that you can do about that whenever you eat the protein to be able to build and switch that metabolic piece, piece of it. So that was a really big piece for me. It was also a big piece for me to start realizing as, you know, Andrew and I even talked through things of just, okay, what does this look like and what does it mean of coming to the understanding that with autoimmune disorder, especially thyroid, I had to up my protein even more. So whereas, you know, she uses her fuel differently than I use my fuel. And so understanding that piece was a really big piece. I think the biggest thing for me, and I know I'm talking a lot, I just want to share this because I get excited because I feel like there comes a place for women, especially peri postmenopause, where they think this is just it. And it's not. We actually can do something if we will educate ourselves just a little bit. And we actually can build muscle for longevity. We are going to talk a lot about muscle, skeletal muscle and longevity tonight. That piece is such a big piece, and I want to give people hope towards that because I am actually transforming my body. For years of the types of workouts, which I'm not going to talk about, that I've gone through, I should legit look differently in body form than I do, and I just took it as this is, um, this is just who I am. But now it makes sense as to why my body is doing what it's doing, and by me adding in protein and getting efficient with it and my body fueling it and using it correct correctly i'm actually building muscle that i've never built before in all these years at my age and so that's a big piece that i want you know people to fully understand is uh that piece of it of actually maybe gaming and then the celiac is the same way having celiac and that in body composition, once again, it's crazy because with celiac and with hypothyroid, it is believed that body composition will be harder for those types of women. But whenever you pull in the protein piece and you really hydrate your body, electrolytes is a really big deal, and then fuel it with higher proteins, never stop your green veg vegetables and your fibers, don't ever start stop that piece, but you've got to fuel with protein first. You actually can change everything because even the absorption rate changes whenever you add in and protein will bring down inflammation. Um, so you're bringing down that inflammation that comes with autoimmune disorder. So all of that is huge, huge connections that have just been mind blowing for me through this process. Yeah, it's really interesting because I know I was at the gym for a year doing classes and I couldn't go past a certain amount. Yeah. And then we, uh, uh, you know, the collagen, I found out about collagen, started taking that. And within a month, yeah. I like could double my weight. Right. And that's, you know, looking back, I'm like, oh, that was protein, like super protein. Right. So as I put in more protein, I literally can lift more because I also have autoimmune issues. Yeah. So hearing that is this like, you know, yeah. sometimes when you have issues, you can kind of be like, oh, but I can't be Andrea or I can't something. But then you go, but I'm not. Right. I'm not on the couch all day like I was. That's right. I'm not on any meds like I know I would have been. So yeah. that so that's why this is so exciting because it's a tool. And it's like, it's more about being tomorrow, being in a better spot than you were a week ago. Absolutely. And this is my thing is, you know, the more that you know, this is my point. 
it might take me, and I already know that, I have to double, well, not double, but you almost double your protein intake with, uh, with hypothyroid and celiac. So I have to take in more. It's going to take me longer. What might take someone like an Andrea that builds muscle in a whole different way than I do, it might take her three months. It might take me nine. It might take me 12. But the point is, if I don't stop doing what I know is actually giving me life, if you will, of exercise and eating correctly, that 12 months will be worth it. You know, I think so often I have a learning disability. So going to school, I had to study four times harder than the person sitting next to me. They could study an hour, I would study four. But guess what? Through the process of that challenge, I was stronger, I learned more, I was more effective because of how I had to take in information. That's what I think about with this, is don't see things as a downfall and say, I can't because of. Be an overcomer, educate yourself, advocate for yourself and build in that way, you know? Yes. Thank you, Melissa. That was very encouraging. And it definitely hit me. So I'm like, Ooh, okay, it's not just me. And, you know, our goal here is not that you have to become a bodybuilder with no. this. It's just that you can be empowered to like lift a few weights at home or do a few squats, you know, do some stuff. And you're going to get way more for your results when you have protein in there including weight loss, energy, um, your body changing. And we all know the sooner you have results, it is easier to stick with it. It is. Um, okay. Andrea, one of the things I love about you is you love to dig into the science. And I always know I can ask you like, what do you think about this? And you've already read like five articles on it. So if you could share a little bit more like gut health, inflammation, but especially sharing from your heart. I know a big part of your story is like this pre post menopause and the hormones. Um, so could you kind of share more about like the hormone protein connection too? So that was a lot go. Well, it's important to just understand, like, uh, one of the things I found fascinating, I'm going to kind of segue into that if that's okay, is Perfect. There's something called the protein leverage hypothesis. They've studied this. And it's like your body has a natural instinct to eat until it gets enough protein. And so what that suggests is that even if you eat a lot of food that has a lot of calories, but not enough protein, your body is still going to want more food because it's looking for the protein that it needs to function properly. So essentially when your protein intake is too low, you're always going to be hungrier. You're always, you're going to be overeating. Uh, you're going to overconsume in the area of fat and carbs um, and attempt to finally try to meet those protein needs. And so um, when we're talking about, um, I feel like I'm doing all the things, but I'm not getting control of X, Y, and Z, especially as you get into perimenopause and menopause. I mean, I'm becoming like kind of crazy about it now. I'm like, do you track your protein? That's like always my first question. Because protein is, so you have to understand like your body is breaking down protein into amino, into amino acids, okay? And so, and that is going to do all kinds of things for your health. It's not just about building muscle, just to be clear. Um, so it's repairing and rebuilding muscle and maintaining the muscle. It's keeping your bones strong. And the older we get, we have, they have something, we have something called sarcopenia, uh, we have like muscle loss, which in turn causes our bone density to be um, less. We, we lose bone density, uh, which causes like a ripple effect in um, fall breaks, heart, you know, injury, um, lack of mobility, not getting off the couch. It's just like a, a snowball effect. Okay. Um, so you want to keep the protein up to keep your bones strong. Okay. Especially as you enter menopause. Um, and you want to continue, it helps your body to repair and recover, um, when you are in peri and menop peri and menop I'm just going to say peri and menopause. That doesn't sound right. Um, your estrogen is, your estrogen is decreasing when your estrogen decreases, your gut microbiome becomes more, um, imbalanced, less diverse, which in turn creates, um, more inflammation. And it's like the cycle continues. So it's amazing. 
I'm not saying that protein is the fix for everything, but it is actually more key than you even realize. Um, it actually supports your immune function. I have to, I had to read these things off. Supports your immune function, helps you to fight infection. Um, and then it is the building block for your hormones and your neurotransmitters, your mental health and all that. So, um, so that's my main thing is just when you are in peri and menopause and your estrogen is declining in some capacity, um, if you're not getting in adequate protein, optimal protein, I'll say, I'm going to say it that way, you're going to see, um, you're going to still continue to struggle. So it's, it's more important the older you get is what I would tell you. Yeah. And, and well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everything crap. Now I have to add on all these things. I think, yeah. that, you know, as we get older, oh, yeah. I mean, it's just about being intentional instead of saying, okay, oh, I'm in menopause. So I'm just automatically going to have high cortisol. I'm automatically going to have a gut. I'm automatically going to sleep badly. Um, I'm going to have all these symptoms. Um, no, you don't have to do that. You just need to know that you can take control of it and sh shift things, but it's about being intentional. And that's when I'd say, are you tracking your protein? <laughs> Yes. I mean, I think it's being equipped. So once we know, you know, it's like, oh, this happens because you're older. You can back that up. Okay. Well, what's happening? You know, oh, I had someone tell me, oh, you know, your hair just falls out as you get older. I'm like, but why? And so then you can, oh, our bodies don't produce collagen like they did when we we're young. Oh, I can supplement collagen. I can, my body might not absorb vitamins as well. Oh, I can supplement that, you know, like, and then it empowers you. And I know my mom, went through menopause with like zero symptoms. She exercises every single day. She walks every single day and then does something. So like, and she eats pretty well too. So like you can, like there's things you could do. And that's exciting because even if you're not there, there's stuff you could do. It's not hopeless that you don't have to depend on doctors. You can just take your health into your own hands. And I'm sure most of you watching are like, okay, this is awesome. I mean, we've learned about all these different things. I'm excited, but what do I do? So Melissa, if you could break this down for us and give us, you know, some ideas for like our next steps of what yeah, to do. Absolutely. And I would love um, in talking about this, there's a couple of things that I want us to kind of fully understand. It is, you know, we're talking protein, protein, protein. And it's like, how much, when do I do it? How do I do it? So I kind of want to just share even a little bit about that. And Andrea, I know that you protein pulsing is a really big deal for you. I don't know if you even want to speak towards that. Um, because I think the big thing is that I want everyone here to know that you can do this. And we really want to kind of give you a plan as to what to do and when to do it. And um, but I'd love, Andrea, just you talk about that pro protein pulsing. And then I'd love to come in right behind you and just talk a little bit about some kind of takeaways that people can say, okay, I can start doing this tomorrow. Right. Okay. So it's um, the, I know that I will, I want to say this cause I didn't add this in the beginning. Sorry. So like the recommended, the RDA for protein is actually under what it should be. So just so y'all know, like we're like 30 years behind. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, sh I wish I could look up like when the last time they put it there. And they my mom it's been like 30 years, it's over yeah. 30 years. They have not caught up with the science. Yeah. So I, I follow a gal. So I'm going to give you a couple of names. You may want to write down Dr. Gabrielle Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S. And she has just written a book called Forever Strong. Mm -hmm. And she recommends about one gram of protein per ideal pound of ideal body weight. So if your ideal body weight is 150 pounds, you need to be getting at least 150 grams of protein in a day. And that is not whether or not you're bodybuilding or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I want every woman over 40 for sure to be lifting weights of some sort, but I'm not talking about you. You don't have to be a bodybuilder is what I'm trying to say. Um, she says for anybody, obviously, especially if you're, if you're sedentary, you should be getting in at least a pound, a gram per pound of protein. So there's that. Um, and then the pulsing just is more of a, 
every two to three hours, get something with protein in it. That's just going to be the easy way I'm going to explain it. So it would look something like for every major meal, um, it would be 30 grams of protein. And then for like your two snacks in between, it would be 15 grams and 15 grams would be a good general pulsing amount. Um, you can have, it's not to be so regimented though, that you're like, oh my gosh, I got 55 at dinner and 35 at breakfast. It's okay. If that happens, um, your body is still going to utilize it. Um, but it's, that's just a good amount. And so I've just gotten to the point and the habit, mind you, it's a habit now. It did, hasn't always been the case. When I have breakfast, when I have lunch and I have dinner, I make sure I get 30 grams of protein. It's just uh, without, without thinking about it, I do. Um, but I will tell you, I had to, to, when I initially started, I got a little scale and I would weigh my, my, um, my, whatever protein I had, whether it be ground turkey, ground beef, um, salmon, tuna, whatever. And I would weigh it. So I'd know how much I was getting and I would plug it into my little macro tracker, my fitness pal. And that way I would know how much protein I was actually getting that when I say track it, that's what I'm talking about. Um, you need to do it at least for a month. I was listening to a, a lady, another lady I like is JJ Virgin. She's got some great podcast material. And then one more is um, Dr. Stacy Sims. And they, they all say you need to be tracking it at least for a certain amount of time. Yeah, I think that that just gets you to where, you know, we all have to form habits. Plus, we all have to educate ourselves as to what an ounce is and how much, you know, that is in there. So that piece is really good. And I will also say just adding in to what Andrea just shared. One thing Dr. Lyons says is, um, I think for both of us, for Andrea and I both, for me, I'll speak to myself personally. So I will tell you that the majority of women get 60 grams or less. So whenever you hear something of what Andrea just said, it's like, oh my goodness, how can I do it? And what we hear from women that we get to have the privilege to coach and to talk through and help them with this process is definitely start slowly. We always hear, I'm so full. How can I ever do that? Uh, I have a couple of thoughts around that, <laughs> um, but don't already set yourself up with an I can't. Be very curious as, as to what I can do. And don't try to eat the whole elephant starting tomorrow. You don't need 150. But get very aware of what you are doing and what can you add to even get to 100. Uh, what can you do slowly to be able to get there? But in thinking about that, you just heard Andrea say, Without a doubt, she definitely gets 30 grams um, every meal. I do, uh, obviously, you know, I do higher. You just heard my whole story as to why I have to have more protein. So 30, it's always going to be your baseline. You actually don't want to go under 30 um, because 30 is where your body kind of triggers to say, we're going to build muscle. And you need bus muscle for longevity. If you want to grow older and thrive as you grow older and be able to keep your blood sugar balanced, be able to keep your hormones balanced, be able to go through menopause gracefully, like that is what you want. And so make sure, you know, that you're, you're getting your 30 because that is a trigger point for your body to begin to use that protein in a very specific way. Um, but I want you to hear this because the majority of people, breakfast is not their main, and I was one of those, breakfast is not their main meal. Breakfast needs to be your top priority meal because you just went through the night fasting. And so Dr. Lyons really speaks towards that first meal needs to be that 30, 35 minimum. For that and so that could be and Melissa, yeah can I just say uh like four or five years ago this was a big thing for me is I used to eat like oatmeal or whatever in the morning and I'd be like I'm always hungry oatmeal isn't filling so I went to a protein shake in the morning and it has changed everything because I don't crash if I eat anything else I could sometimes do like eggs and some veggies but if I do anything else with carbs I just crash and so 
if you guys crash in the morning, like a couple hours after breakfast, I'm telling you this high protein first thing in the morning, and it's not hard. It's like, you know, the eggs or the shake. Yeah. It really made a huge difference for me. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that because you saw the shift. You saw exactly what changed for you. And so being able to see that, and then that's going to be a really big piece for you is that supplementation is a big piece. You kind of heard us talk about gut health, autoimmune, proteins, things like that. Absorbing is a big deal. And the way that we absorb is for our gut to be healthy. So really looking at probiotics, omegas, especially if you have inflammation and you're trying to bring inflammation down. Magnesium is a really big piece towards that. Blood sugar stabilization. So you're doing something towards that. Protein is going to help those pieces. But make sure that you're supplementing in some way to where your body can actually be absorbing because you have a healthy gut. So I, that's a piece that I think is really important. You heard about that whole, um, you know, pul uh, protein pulsing and being able to do that. I think a lot of times, trust me, you're like, there's no way I can do five meals in a day because you have two snacks and three meals. I was that person. I'm going to ask you to be curious, not to be a canter, <laughs> um, but be a curious person and um, allow yourself get in those three and then begin to adjust and bring in because it is a little we're all regimented we all have a way that we do our life and so giving yourself a little bit of grace towards that piece of it it's going to be a really big, big piece for you i think the other thing is oh my goodness as you're bringing in protein we talked about how it lowers inflammation but do yourself a favor as you're doing this and really start ridding yourself of anti-inflammatories or inflammatories. And so dairies, cheeses, I know that's hard, sauces and dressing. Like what are a couple of things that you can take out that's only going to make you better um, as you bring in these proteins and be able to help yourself in that way? That's going to be a really big piece for you. And I mean, then even... Even if you just cut out the drinks, like yeah. the sugary drinks or the alcohol sugar. drinks, like yeah. if I were to start somewhere, that's where I would start. Like Great change point. your drinks. And change your fast food, right? Maybe <laughs> don't cook your fast food as much. Maybe don't eat out of just boxes as much, you know, little things like that of being able to see those things. I think another thing that we didn't even touch on tonight, which is something just for you to start thinking about that really brings in because it's all connected is your sleep. You talked about hydration, electrolytes is a really big deal of absorbing into um, your muscles. So your muscles need that in it for recovery, for building all the different pieces and that protein absorption. Those are all going to be really big pieces as well. So being able to know those things and just saying, what are one or two things that I can start doing starting tomorrow to start um, educating myself and really begin to heal my body and build my body in a way that's going to give me lasting effect. Yeah. Um, Andrea, I love how when you talk about protein, this is kind of extra. It's not on our talk list, but you always say you're boring. <laughs> that you eat boring. Can you just give us like a rundown of your boring day? Like that's what I think people right, thumbs up if you guys want or yes in the chat if you want to hear this is like boring to me means simple and easy and doable. So Andrea, could you share like one of your boring food days? <laughs> this is kind of say I started with a I will tell you the way I came about this is I did start with a macro coach for a season because I wanted to understand it and and I could basically plug in everything into my fitness pal and meet a certain amount of macros which is like your proteins your fats and your carbs and calories um and I learned so much doing that but then I switched to a coach that had a fuel plan for me and it was all figured out already and I love that so much more because I could keep everything fairly simple and um I personally enjoy that the most. That's just me on a daily basis. I like to just keep it simple and know what I'm doing. Um, and somebody asked me, do you weigh it when it's cooked or raw? Like if it's meat, I actually go ahead. Like if it's ground turkey, I go ahead and cook it and then weigh it cooked. And then when you go to plug it into your macro app, you know, you'll plug in just 
ground turkey cooked because and when you when you plug it into these apps people have already put suggestions in there just for the record so it's like usually easy to find um I'll just make sure it says cooked and then it'll give me the appropriate amount, amount of grams that goes with that. Um, but I weigh everything cooked. So that's the way my coach taught me to do it. So that's what I do. Um, but you know, my typical morning, um, I, I, I cycle too. I do what's called rotational eating. So it's like, I have a day that I focus on protein and fat, a day I focus on protein and carbs, and then a day I pr focus on protein and veggie. It's not to sound, make it sound complicated to you. It's more to help you understand when I go through what I eat, why it sounds the way it does. So like just on a typical protein veggie day, I may, I may have, um, I may have my coffee with a little bit of protein powder in it. So I'll do that. Um, but then for breakfast, I'll have like eight egg whites. And when I have eight egg whites, I like it and it tastes good to me, but some people don't like that. And they may put a little bit of ground turkey with their egg whites. Okay. Like lean ground turkey. Um, you can put on, you know, some hot, so I put on hot sauce on mine just to spice it up. So I may have egg whites, you know, and then mid morning, I will have my protein shake. So I do have two shakes a day that typically not every day, but typically. And then for lunch, um, I'll have, you know, ground, like a ground turkey or cut up chicken breast and I'll put it with green lettuce or if it's a carb day I'll have a little bit of brown rice or quinoa and then a little bit of uh, like a green vegetable with that 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 ground chicken or that cut up chicken or ground turkey I also will have like maybe for my snack I'll have a thing of sardines because I like sardines now that's a thing I like yep <laughs> I do it too it's honestly way better than you imagine. And I have a special kind I get that doesn't look gross and it tastes honestly. And so they all look gross, but okay. <laughs> I still eat them. Looks like little slimy fish. It's like already like it just looks like tuna to me. Oh it, here. Anyway. It actually tastes like tuna, I think. Yeah. There, there's a little trick there. Um, and then, you know, and then, you know, I'll just, so I mean, or I may, if I'm out, I will tell you this guys, like, cause I homeschool and I'm doing stuff with my kids and blah, blah, blah. So I do have, I carry my little tunas that it's at Costco. You can get something called safe catch tuna. Melissa got me onto this and it's more like mercury free and all that kind of stuff. And that one little sucker, that little tin can is like almost 40 grams of protein. It's 43. Yeah. 43 grams. Well, I'll take that out with me and I'll just peel it open and I'll take a plastic fork in the car and I'll just eat it. And I will, <laughs> I will tell y'all, the more I've been doing this and eating protein more often, you don't want to eat a lot of other food. Like you end up just naturally not eating all the carbs and all the, you don't eat the bread. You don't eat the, the extra stuff because it fills you up, you know, so you just need to make sure you're getting enough fiber, you know? Um, so make sure you are getting the lettuce or having the fiber rich foods with it. And then for dinner, you know, we may have salmon and a green leafy lettuce and I'll put some banana peppers on it and I'll make my little dressing with like mustard and vin red vinaigrette. It tastes good. And that's <laughs> it. It's a big meal. And so that's how I do it. And then sometimes I don't know if you like cottage cheese. I'll just have like a half a cup of cottage cheese because that's a good amount of protein with that too. So, yeah, I love this because all of those, well, maybe not the sardines according to the chat, but everything else is very approachable, familiar, comfortable, and it's just doing it. Um, and I, one of the things that really got me excited about sharing this with people is I actually read a study when women, and I was looking for studies for women, when they ate more protein and they were just focused on more protein overall they had less calories but they weren't trying to do less calories so like Absolutely. that's kind of what you're saying Andrea like you just feel full you feel satisfied and you know when you start eating and your body's happy like then you really feel it when you don't eat it and it doesn't mean that like something's happened your body is like oh can't do dairy now or can't do no you're just more in tune you've realized oh when I eat this I feel great but now when I eat stuff or drink a soda, you feel the effect on your body where that used to be just your normal kind of thing. And I love what you said, Diana, because I think it's key. If you eat lean proteins, you actually are 
calorie deficient, which you love to have less calories, higher protein, especially if you're wanting to lose weight. So whenever we talk about proteins, we're not talking about sausage, right? Like we're not it, talking bacon. about, yeah, exactly. Bacon, anything like that. We're really talking about, you know, your chickens, your fishes, your lean turkeys, your lean ground beef, things like that. And being able to see that piece of it and understand that another thing, I think a lot of people, whenever they're like, how do we get that much protein? Egg whites, like she talked about, is a really big deal. Chicken broth. I have a chicken broth that I do that's 30 grams. So you can drink a cup of chicken broth. I usually drink it through a straw. You can drink it so quickly if you're moving quickly, but it's 30 grams right there. And so there's different ways that you can pull that in once you get used to the habit. And listening to Andrea talk about her, her meal plan, which it, it, I automatically think of, you know, Steve Jobs, he wore a black t-shirt every single day because he didn't have to think about what he was going to wear every single day. And he used his energy towards more important things. And so when you get to where you're kind of tracking yourself and you're eating a menu, lots of mamas set out menus for the week of what we're going to eat. And I hear so many women say, we kind of cycle through dinner every two weeks we have we cycle back through i think about it like that and once you get a plan in place for your food eat those foods um and get bored with it if you want but what you're doing is you're literally setting yourself up for success with that i'm not really having to think about it it's just habitual of what you're going to eat breakfast lunch and dinner and for your snacks you know Yes. And as a bonus for everyone on here, I do have a 30 day meal plan that's high protein. Um, I don't think it's quite 150, but it was one that I have. So it is higher Has a lot of really good recipes in there that are simple. So message whoever added you to this call. Um, we will be posting them in chat threads. It's just a link to like a Canva document kind of thing, but it will, if you're kind of like, okay, I hear you, but I don't, I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> You can take this and just do this. And then you can kind of figure out what works for you. Um, but thank you. I just stopped my mic down. I got overexcited. High protein tuna from Costco. Um, it's called Safe Catch. Yeah. And and then someone asked about um, oatmeal in the morning. You know, here's what I would say. I mean, I'm not going to... I'm just going to speak for me. I do, I do rotate every three days. I have oatmeal for breakfast, but it's, um, it's like, what is it, Melissa? I think it's like a third of a cup of dry oatmeal. Is yeah, it? it's only it's, a third of a cup. It's not a lot. Yeah. I see people do, and I'm not saying you're doing this, but they eat a lot of oatmeal <laughs> and just a little bit of, so we do like a third a cup of oatmeal. Which and is then, dry, yeah. Which when it, when you cook it, it's, I mean, it swells up. It's right. a good Right. or egg whites off to the side. So I get my protein with it. So if you could add protein powder, if you're in a hurry, it, protein powder is fine to some degree, but really it's always best to try your best to have whole real food. food. Do yeah. your best to have real food. And I love one thing. I know we got to go, but I love what Andrea just shared. When you do have that carb, match it with a protein from a glucose standpoint, you don't want to just have carbs bring in that, you know, she has a protein shake. Her protein shake does have some carbs in it, but she's offsetting as well. Um, so always think through that piece. If you are going to have some good carbs, make sure that you are matching it with a protein because you absorb it differently. Your body actually processes it differently than just having the carb. It's kind of like a carb hack where like you can kind of have some carbs without the crashing because yeah. of the protein. Yeah, well, what I've found is most of the time, if you do go out to eat, um, whatever they give you with the the protein and the carb, the carb is way more than the amount of protein you're getting. Like that's the thing is it's it's it should be flipped around the other way, you know. So and they're, they're at, oh no, no, go ahead. They're asking about the whole egg, and I think I have an aunt I know, but um, if one of you want to touch on why you're avoiding the whole egg, I just shared that. So okay. Um, egg white is your lean, lean protein. So 
you know, Andrea shared, I think, I don't remember how many, she bases hers on how many eggs she has. I do a cup, which is 25 grams of protein in egg whites. Sometimes I do two cups. So there's 50 right off the mark. Um, and egg, yellow of eggs is your fat. Egg, a whole egg is incredible. But, um, you know, just don't do those as often because of that fat side of it. So like for Andrea and I, we do that cycling where it's a protein, veggie, carb, fat. We cycle that. So on our fat day, we would do a whole egg um, and whole eggs are good for you. It's just that the the whites have, um, they're leaner. Yeah. So we would do like two whole eggs to f with four. Exactly. Whites however you have ever met you measure that with like you know if you measure it i love um, that love that so, so if you're yeah. starting right now and you're like i don't want egg whites like i would start like that we're two yes, eggs absolutely. and then add in the egg whites yeah yeah, yeah it, it it feels like you're just eating regular eggs it does because when i do it i mix it together it doesn't seem like it's more egg whites it feels like regular eggs to me yeah absolutely. But, i mean we're talking about if you're wanting to lean out obviously that's why we're talking about this mm -hmm. so. yeah well, thank you guys. This was really good. And I'm so thankful all of you guys who stayed on for this. It's almost been an hour. So I'm hoping that means this was helpful. Go ahead and comment, especially if something particular that really stood out. Again, we will be sharing this meal plan for you all later. So touch in with us if you don't see it in a, a while, because um, give us some time to post things. We will have a recording so that you can also, if you're on this call and you're like, oh my gosh, my friend would so benefit from this get the recording and you can just send it to them. Okay. We, you, this is free. We're not charging for this. We want you to share. We want people to be helped. So thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Melissa. Good night, everyone. I'm so Thank glad you. we could do this. Thanks so much.